Praise God, praise God, praise God. Hey, can I invite us to stand right now, wherever you are, just stand in the center, wherever you are, just stand. Let me make a few declarations. Our God is good, amen? No matter what you have gone through this week, no matter what you are going through, no matter what you are facing, God is in control. He is always, always, always good. Would you agree with me? Yes? Amen. So on the count of three, wherever you are, all over Singapore, right? Here in the central area, in the east area, in the northeast, in the west area, on the count of three, let's give God praise. The Bible says, enter his courts with praise, his gates with thanksgiving. And we want to do that, let him know that he is good. We declare with all our hearts that Jesus is in control. He's always good. On the count of three, let's give him praise. One, two, three. Come on, let's praise him. Come on, people, let's praise him. Let's praise him, praise him. Thank you, thank you, wherever you are, online, on site, wherever you are. Come on, give him praise, 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 give him praise. Come on, give him praise, give him praise. Our God is good. He's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. Praise God, praise God. Come on, give him praise, give him praise, give him praise. And come on, praise God, praise God. When we praise God, when we look at God as who He really is, all the things that we go through, they are so small, they are so insignificant. Come on, praise Him, 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 praise Him. Amen, 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 amen. As you remain standing, as you remain standing, I want to take some time to pray. This morning, last night, rather, I was praying for this service. Uh, I sense that God wants to minister to some of us who are having family relational issues, extended family relational issues, not your immediate family, maybe with your in-laws, uh, your, your, uh, whoever, your relatives, whoever they are, right? Some of us are going through some challenges. I want to be able to pray for you. I believe that there is anointing when we pray together as a corporate body. So I'm not going to ask you to lift your hands because because um, your Santa family may be here, okay? So I'm not going to ask you to leave your hands because it's kind of a private matter. So wherever you are right now, I want to pray for you, all right? If that is you, you just lift up your hands and you receive it. I right? don't have to leave it too high so you won't see, all right? So but God will see. Pray together, shall we? Lord, we just pray right now in Jesus' name. For those of us who are having relational issues in the extended family, I bless them. I ask, Lord, that you guide us, you help us, you minister to us. I ask that your anointing be upon us. Give us wisdom. Give us a heart of love and grace. You minister to us as only you could. We trust in you. We look to you. You are the giver of all good things. We receive it in Jesus' name. And everyone say, Amen. Amen. Before I get seated down, turn to your neighbor on left and right. Tell them this. Our God is good. Come on. <clears throat> Our God is good. Praise God. Please be seated. For the past two and a half years, due to COVID, all of us have gone through different challenges. As a result, whatever that were already in us, these issues, they were brought to the surface. If we are humble enough, we should turn to God in recognition that we have these issues in our life and ask Him for His help. I believe with all my heart that God is using this whole season to bring about a reboot, a reset, a recalibration in all of our lives so that He can do a new refining work in us. That is why the focus for this year is not done yet. God is not done with us yet. Turn to your neighbor on left and right. Tell them this. God is not done with me yet. Come on, tell them. God is not done with me yet. God is doing His refining work such that he can bring about a remnant of people to bring about his end-time harvest. And then in February, God spoke to us in no unclear fashion. The picture that God gave to us was that the Holy Spirit is dropping dollop of salt upon each and every one of our tongue because God wants to induce an insatiable thirst in us that we will desire and thirst for more of God in our lives. We need to long for the Holy Spirit in our life. On that note, for this weekend and the next, we are looking at the third part of our Not Done Yet series. This is going to be a two-part series. This is the third time we are looking at our Not Done Yet series. And the first part, I'm going to talk to us about ushering in God's glory in our life. How do we do that? Then next part, we're going to learn about how God has set us apart for His work. You see, one of the signs of reliance on God, 
One of the signs of a person who has an insatiable thirst for more of God is this desire to pray. We have this desire to seek God. We have this desire to dwell in the presence of God. We long for spiritual things, not just natural things alone. You know, over the past years, Pastor Claudia and myself, we have taken the time to pray almost on a daily basis. And we have experienced many breakthroughs in our lives, in our marriages, in our own heart. We have begun to experience what it really means to, to, to live out the words of the psalmist. I yearn for you. I thirst for you. My body longs for the living God. Where can I go and meet the living God? And because we have experienced this, what I want to do is I want to bring this experience to all of us, such that all of us as a church, we can all have a greater desire for God. Not just do churchy things. Not just come to church. Not just read the Bible. Not that these things are wrong. These things are good. But more than all these things, we're in the center of our hearts, the deepest recesses of our being. There is this desire for more of God. I would like to pass on what I've received from God to all of us from the young to the old, from the Filipino to the local, from the dialect to the Chinese group. Everyone in our church, I would like all of us to have this experience. Now, let's let our Bible turn to the book of John and chapter 17. John chapter 17 is the concluding portion of Jesus' farewell speech. This farewell speech started in John 14, after Jesus had his last supper with his disciples. As John 17 is the last chapter before Jesus' arrest, trial, and crucifixion, there is no better place for us to catch a glimpse of Jesus' passion than from his prayer to his heavenly Father. Now go with me to John chapter 17, verses 1 through to 5. Let's look at those five verses together. Listen to the reading of the Word of God. The Bible tells us in verse 1, John 17, verse 1, after Jesus said this, he looked toward heaven and he prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son that your Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all you have given him. Now, this is eternal life that they know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Verse 4, I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, Jesus prayed, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. I want to talk to us today about ushering God's presence, ushering God's glory, rather. Ushering God's glory. The word glory, the word glorify, were used a total of five times in these five short ver verses. It is quite clear that glory is the preeminent theme in this segment of Jesus' prayer. Let me share you two things. How can we usher God's glory into the different spaces that God has placed us in? In our family? in our workplace, in our life group, in our church, in our blocks, in our neighborhood? How can we usher in the glory of God into these different spaces that God has put us in? Two things. Number one, we've got to pray. We've got to learn to seek God's glory in prayer. The key word is the word prayer. We've got to seek God in prayer. Pray for God's glory to inhabit the space that He has put us in. Now, let's look at verse 1. The Bible says, after Jesus said this, what did he say? He was telling his disciples about his impending capture, trial, and crucifixion. After he had said his last words to his disciples, the Bible says that he looked towards heaven and he prayed. How did he pray? What did he pray? He said, Father, the hour has come. The moment of truth has come. What you have sent me from heaven to earth, the last of my mission, the mother of all mission is here. The hour has come. I'm about to be arrested, put to trial, and then crucified, and I will die for the sin of the world. The hour has come. And then Jesus prayed these words, glorify your son that your son may glorify you. I don't know about you, 
But I've been in church for many years. I pray with many different people. In groups of twos, in threes, in bigger groups, I have never ever once heard someone in our church at least pray, glorify me. Have you heard before? Have you heard someone in your life group pray halfway, God, glorify me. So what is Jesus talking about here? What is Jesus saying here? Is Jesus seeking self-glory? Now let's look at verse 1 to verse 3. Now Jesus said, the hour has come, glorify your son, that your son may glorify you. What is this glorifying all about? And then he said in verse 2, For because you have granted Jesus, you, my son, your son, me, authority over all people, that he might give eternal life to all you have given him. Now this is eternal life that they may know God and know Jesus. So Jesus is saying, hey, glorify me, God. Glorify me. How? Glorify me so that I can go to the cross to die and buy the pardon for the whole world, such that the whole world, everybody will have opportunity to know you. Let your glory fill the earth as it is in heaven. The way to glory for Jesus is the way of the cross. And yet, in spite of the pain, Jesus still seeks God's glory in prayer. Glorify me. And this glorifying God, Jesus, is not that glorifying. It's more glorifying, even though I'm talking about It's going to be a a journey of pain. But why did he do that? He willingly go through that so that everybody will have an opportunity to know God and have a right standing before God. So even in the midst of pain, Jesus still desired to seek God's glory. And here, he seek the glory of God through prayer. See, this whole idea of seeking God's glory in our prayer is consistent with what Jesus taught the disciples. Now go with me to Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 and verse 10. Jesus was teaching the disciples and Jesus said this, This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Holy is your name. Worthy is your name. Your name is to be exalted. Your name is to be honoured. Your name is to be glorified. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So what Jesus is saying, that this is how you should pray. Father, your name is holy. You are worthy. You are glorious. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The focus is on God. The focus is to glorify God. Lord, whatever that's happening upstairs, let it come downstairs. Let the glory that is with you in heaven, let it inhabit the earth. Your holiness that is in heaven, Lord, let it be a reality on planet earth. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Let the knowledge of the glory of God fill the earth as the water covers the sea. You see, this is important. Jesus is teaching us this from his own example while praying to his heavenly Father in John 17. In John, Matthew chapter 6, when he teaches the disciples how to pray, you can see that Jesus is teaching us that our prayer, it has got to be beyond just our personal needs. Nothing wrong with praying for our personal needs. We need to do that. We pray for our personal needs. We pray for our personal requests. We pray for our personal concern. But above that, we must also learn to pray for God's glory to fill the earth. Jesus is teaching us us that Jesus is saying to us in all that we do, in fact the Bible tells us in all that we do, either we eat or we drink, we get married we have children, we go to work, we go to school, we go for holiday, in all that we do, our life purpose is to glorify God. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 31 has this to say so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do Whatever you do, ladies and gentlemen, whatever you do, not only on Sunday when you come to church, whatever you do, when you go to work in DBS Bank, when you go to work as a teacher, when you, as a homemaker, as you eat, as you drink, as you go for holiday, in all that we do, the Bible says, do it all for the glory of God. Do it all for the glory of God. In our prayer, certainly, we pray for the glory of God to fill the spaces that God has put us in, above 
praying for our own personal needs. Nothing wrong with that. We must do that. We ought to do that. But beyond that, learn to ask God's glory to fill the different spaces that He has put us in. So let me ask you a question. In our live group chat, can I humbly ask us that beyond just praying for one another, which we do that quite a lot, pray for me. I'm not well. Pray for me. I'm having a little bit of fever, a bit of sore throat. There's a faint line showing on the test. Pray for me. My children going to, going to different school. Pray for me. I'm going for this. I'm going for that. A health check. Nothing wrong with that. We've got to do all those things. But in our life, good chat, I want to ask us in our life, good chat, let's learn to pray for God's glory to fill the space that our life group is positioned in. Pray for people who are far from God. Pray. Would you pray for my family? My family, a lot of them do not know Jesus as yet. Would you pray for the zone? My life group is in Kalang Zone. Would you pray for Kalang Zone? Can you pray for Block 123, Bukit Merah? Would you pray for me? Would you pray for me in my office? Would you pray that God's glory will fill this space beyond just praying for one another, you and I, I and you? We should do that and we must do that. But beyond that, let's pray for God's glory to fill the space that He has put us in. Take the time. To pray for our schools if you are a student. Pray for our campuses. Pray for our families. Pray for our blocks. Pray for our zone. You see, after the conference, among the many different things that God has spoken to us, one of the key things that God has spoken to us is this whole thing about revival. God wants to bring revival. So after the conference, one of the things that I've really been praying is that God, bring your revival first and foremost in me and then through me. But God, please begin in me. Begin in me and then begin in Pastor Claudia. Begin within two of us. So I want to ask you, if you are married, would you take the time to pray with your spouse? Take the time to pray with your spouse. It may not be easy as a start. Maybe it's kind of hard to sustain five minutes. I was sharing the leaders when I started with praying with Pastor Claudia. It's very hard for me because in my mind, not true, right? In my mind, because of my impatience, I feel like Claudia keeps oscillating over the same thing over and over again. So she prays oscillating. So what I'll do, I will go to the toilet. I'm not kidding you. And then I'll take a leak and then I listen to her prayer. I say, oh, I still haven't finished. I must take two legs and take a poop and bathe and then she's still praying the same thing. So it's kind of hard. Five minutes, man. Then after that, I grew. We prayed for 10 minutes, half an hour. And, and it's not about the length of prayer. It's just this desire between my wife and I to pray, to seek the Lord. So for those of you who are married, can I ask you to spend time with your spouse to pray, to pray for the glory of God, to fill your family, to pray that God will revive both of you as an instrument that will be greatly used for Him. Pray as a couple. Those of us who are single, we pray also. Those of us who are in live group, we pray. We set a time in our live group chat group. Can we do that? Live group chat, we set our alarm maybe every night, 9 a.m. I don't know what's a good time for adults. 9 a.m. maybe. We pray for five minutes. Everybody pray. Five minutes. All right, then 10 minutes. Maybe some will say yes, some will say no, but you begin with a few. doesn't matter. Just one, just two. Just start somewhere. You pray. And then after you finish praying, what do you do? You type in the chat group, you know, the emoji, the, the hand one, right? Yeah. Thank you very much. I prayed. I prayed. Or oh, everyone can do your own emoji, your live group member. Everyone take a picture, then I prayed, you know. Everybody. Pray together. Just five minutes. You know, one important truth is this. Now listen, don't miss this. If we pray only when we have time, if we pray only when we have the time to pray, we will never pray. Do you hear what I'm saying? If we pray only when we have the time to pray, we will never pray. So what that means is that it has to be intentional. Set a time in your life group. Nine o'clock, we will pray. Even if you're the only one who prayed, let start somewhere. Start somewhere to pray. In your commute, take the time to pray. Those of us who are traveling in MRT, take the time to pray. Between this station and this station, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. For those of us who drive, we pray also. But with our eyes wide open, can someone say amen? You know, one of the things that God has really changed me is that I pray a lot right now, even when I drive. I will leave my meeting about 15 minutes early and I'll literally drive on the left lane. I kid you not. I drive on the left lane and I pray and I pray and I pray. 
I just want to pray. And I look at the rear view mirror, I can see the lorry driver impatient with me. Can you imagine? Then the lorry driver will overtake me, then the lorry driver will look at me, you. And then he'll overtake me, and then I can see all the foreign workers look at me, you. I just want to pray. It served me so well in three ways. Lower my blood pressure, save me petrol, increase my prayer life. I want to ask you to do that. I know people in our church, what they do is that they will drop one or two MRT stop before their home so that they can pray. They can walk and they can pray. I think Pastor Daniel does that a lot. Two things, so they can clock 10,000 steps and he can pray. Become spiritually healthy and physically healthy. In our live group gatherings, in all the meetings that we conduct, I really want to urge you, friends, don't just bang, 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 go through the agenda, back up, let's go. Live group, bang, 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 9.30, 10.30, let's go. Set time, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, let's come together, let's pray. Let's pray that God will revive every single one of us. And as we are revived, God will bring His revival in and through us to the space He has positioned us to be in. All of history, great revival, have one attribute in common. People fervently prayed for them. Consider the works of Jonathan Edwards, George Whitfield, John and Charles Wesley, Evan Roberts, Jim Sambala, Andrew Murray, Lottie Moon, and countless others. All these are ordinary people who learn to pray. As a result, God brought revival and awakening through each and every one of them. And God wants to do the same in modern-day Singapore in the 21st century. Would you turn to your neighbor on your left and your right? Tell them this. Pray for God's glory. Come on, tell them. Pray for God's glory. Pray for God's glory to fill our space. Number two, obedience. Not only do you pray, second thing we ought to do is extend God's glory through obedience. Extend God's glory through our obedience. So how do you usher in God's glory? First thing, you've got to learn to pray. Really pray. Seek the Lord in prayer. But don't just pray. Obey what the Holy Spirit is leading us to do. Let's look at verse 4. Jesus said this in verse 4. He continued to pray. He said, Father, I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. The lesson we can glean here is this. Jesus is not only praying for God's glory to be filled, he also asks that God's glory be filled through him. The lesson is the same for all of us. Not just pray that God, your glory fill the earth. God wants to do that. But the thing that we should pray is that God, would you fill the earth with your glory? Would you fill this family with your glory? Through me. Would you fill this life group with your glory? This whole block, this whole zone. How? God, through me. We learned from Billy Graham's prayer during the conference. He prayed, do it again, Lord. Do it again. And would you do it again through me? That's key. Not just doing it again, because God longs to do it. God will bring about a revival. God will bring about a great end time harvest. But the key is that God is looking for individual. God is looking for people to work through. May your kingdom, may your glory fill the earth as it is in heaven. And would you, Lord, do it through me? In Acts chapter 2, verse 17 to verse 21. This is a day of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit came. And Peter here began to quote from the book of Joel. In verse 17, he began to quote, and he said this, in the last days, guys, we are living in the last days. There are wars and rumors of wars. There are pestilences. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Every one of us. Every one of us. Every single one of us, I'll pour out my spirit on all people. If you desire, God will give it to you. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. You will speak the word of truth. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servant, both men and women, both the guy and the girl, 
I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. Verse 19, I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and billows of smoke. There's going to be great signs and wonders. Not just what we think, not just intellectual faith alone. Nothing wrong with that, but God will show His signs and wonders. Verse 20, The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. It will be unmistakable. God is coming back. It cannot be missed. Verse 21, And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. God wants to do it through all of us. God is coming back. He's going to bring about a revival in our land. But God is looking for individuals, you, me. Would you stand up and be counted for? If you remember with me, now, in the conference, God spoke to us about revival, clear fashion. And then, after a few weeks later, I shared a lesson to all the leaders. I said that the conference is like going to a holiday. It's going to be great. It's like going to the river, going to the beach. Everybody enjoy themselves. Plenty of water, we have fun, but as good as it is, only two days in the entire calendar year. So after we return from the holiday, we come back to our daily grind. So what do we need to do to satisfy this insatiable thirst? I was sharing with all the leaders that we got to learn to dig our own well. Now, this is how it works. This is how it works. God has given me a mental picture and I want to share with all of us. God wants us to dig our well. As we dig our well, what is happening is that we are feeding our own insatiable thirst. But as we dig the well deeper and deeper and deeper, this water is not only there to feed our own thirst. It will overflow and feed the people around us. Now imagine with me, if you are a life group leader or you are somebody in the life group, you say, God, I long for revival. I want to be revived. You dig your own well. What do you do? You pray, you seek God, you live righteously, you trust God, you dwell in the Holy Spirit, you dig your well, you dig your well, you feed yourself, and then you feed yourself so much that the people around you, they come near you, they caught the Spirit. They say, what is going on with you? Why are you so joyful? Why are you so excited? Why, why is there a glow in your face? Why is there a bounce in your spirit? You say, I've been digging my own well. So what happened is this guy, they saw you, they will drink from your well, but they will also be keen to dig their own well. So they will dig. Before you know it, everybody in the life group will dig their own well. When you put all the wells together, what do you get? You get a little pond. Because everybody, well is there. And then after a little while, the whole zone dig their well, what do you get? You get a river. But can you imagine with me, can you imagine with me, if everyone in our church, everyone, 5,000, 6,000 of us, we all dig our own wells. Everybody dig their well, dig their well, because we're all excited about the things of God. We all long for God. Everyone dig their own well. What do we have? We have an ocean. And before you know it, revival has come. People from the outside, they will come to church. They will sit down here. And they're not just wowed by the program. They're not just wowed by what's happening on stage. They are wowed by everything that we do. From the connect corner to here. From the worship to the hello, hello, to the service, to the after service, to the live group, to the individual conversation, to the conversation with everybody. Tom, Dick, Harry, Sally, Mary, every single body. They come to church and they caught something. There is something that's happening here. Why? Because all of us start to dig our own well. But where does it begin? It begins with you. It begins with you in your life group. You start to dig your well. You feed yourself. You satisfy your insatiable thirst. And you impact the person around you. Around you. And before we know it, everybody, does, everybody starts digging their own well. That's how it happens. And that's what God wants us to to do. So how do you obey God? Quickly, two things. Number one, fulfill God's call. All right, fulfill God's call. How do you obey God? What does God want us to do? God wants us to fulfill His call for our lives. Jesus said, I have finished the work you gave me to do. You see, God has a plan for each and every one of us. Every one of us, God has given us a unique role. And God wants us to fulfill the role that he has entrusted to us. So we should not compare. Your role is different from my role. My role is different from her role. We all have different roles. Don't compare, don't compete, but we should complete the role that God has given to us. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, the Bible says, Therefore, 
since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. God has a race for you wherever you are. Wherever you are studying, wherever you are working, wherever you are living right now, God has positioned you there and God has given us a role in fulfilling His great commission. Secondly, how else do we obey God's call? Number two, we've got to learn to humble ourselves before the Lord. Humble ourselves before the Lord. When we learn to humble ourselves before God, God will exhort us. And God will exhort us to glorify His own name. In verse 5, Jesus prayed, And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. Even though Jesus is part of the Godhead, even though Jesus is part of the Trinity, He humbled Himself before God. He said, God, glorify me with the glory I had with you before the world began. And Jesus humbled himself, and that is why God exalted him, the name that's above every other name. The same for us. When we learn to humble ourselves in obedience to God, God will exalt us for his glory. We need to learn the importance of obedience and humbling ourselves before the Lord. In Micah chapter 6, verse 8, the Word of God tells us, He has shown you, O mortal, what is good and what does, the, what does the Lord require of you? What does God want from us? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with God. God is teaching us to walk humbly with Him. God wants to do a new work in our church. You know, brothers and sisters, it's kind of interesting because in our church, we planned our sermon series four months ahead. So this series was actually planned before the conference. I've told the team, this is how we're going to do it, this is how we're going to do it. We, we planned it. And then during the conference, God spoke to us rather clearly. And then during the leaders' gathering, God spoke to us very clearly. So last month, when I received whatever that we were prepared to do, I told the team, I said, guys, we got to change. we got to change. we got to tell the church people, all of us here, to have a desire for the presence of God in our lives. Because to be honest with you, I have concern that some of us, we are not familiar with the things of God. We are more natural than supernatural. And sometimes when I go to the church office, I pray my staff. I can tell some of them, they, they cannot sustain a prayer time with God. They will just pray, pray for a while, pray, 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 pray for a while. After one or two minutes, everybody will be quiet. They will like, look around. And then you know what, what we have to do? We have to sing a song. Because sing song, everybody can sing. Sing, 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 lift our hand. Then after, let's pray together. Then after that. Now, don't get me wrong. I am not being legalistic in this. I'm not saying that you pray very long, pray 10 hours, you're more spiritual than 5 hours or whatever. But surely, if we're honest with ourselves, if we are familiar with the presence of God, it's going to be so easy for us to dwell in God's presence. It's not just the act of praying, but the desire to pray. I don't see it a lot in our church. And I say, God, the problem is me. Because the truth is that it is easier to do things than to pray. Isn't that true? Because when you do things, it gives you a, a resemblance of control. I can do something. Praying is kind of like, okay, we'll do it, but easier to do things. So I say, God, we've got to do this. We've got to teach the church to pray. Claudia and myself, we've got to dig our well. Dig our well. Then everybody start to dig their own well. We have to have an attitude of praying, seeking God, asking God to bring His revival in and through us. So my question for us is this, would you join me? Would you join me to trust God 
in this venture that God wants to bring us to? It doesn't take the whole church, but it begins with a few individuals. At the end of November 1949, two sisters from the Isles of Lewis in Scotland, Peggy and Christine Smith, 84 and 82 years old, Peggy completely blind, and Christine bent over with arthritis. They were burdened due to the depressed spiritual stage in their village church. Not one young people attended church. But they heard God speaking to them clearly. In Isaiah 44, God spoke to them, I will pour water on the thirsty land and streams on the dry ground. I will pour out my spirit on your offspring and my blessing on your descendant. These two sisters heard it and this led them to pray in their small cottage two to three nights per week from 10 p.m. to 3 a.m. After several weeks of praying like this, Peggy had a vision of her church crowded with young people and an unknown minister preaching from the pulpit. A few weeks later, Scottish preacher Duncan Campbell visited the island to preach. During his time on Lewis Island, revival broke out. This is 1949. Revival broke out and hundreds of people came to know Christ. In fact, on the first day of preaching, 122 young people were saved. Next picture, please. This is Duncan Campbell. Next one, please. This is Duncan Campbell with Peggy and Christine Smith. 84 and 82 years old. There was this desire for more of God. I desire for more of God in my life. I desire to see God doing His work in our church. I desire to see God's refining fire in all of us here in Exodus and whatever centre you are in or wherever you are watching this broadcast. I want God to do a cleansing work in our hearts. First, revive us and then bring revival in and through each and every one of us. That's my cry. Would you stand together with me right now, wherever you are? Hallelujah. Shall we lift our hands wherever we are? Shall we leave our hands Strip me back of all my pride, my possessions. Till all I want and all I seek is your presence. Oh, we surrender. Strip me back of all my pride, my possessions. Till all I want and all I seek is your presence. Away. A fire and a zeal, a fire full of love, heaven open up. Come and fill this place with your mercy, with your grace, Holy Spirit. Spirit with power and with love, 
strip me back of all my pride, my possessions. Till all I want and all I seek is your presence. shall we? Let's all pray together. Pray that God's glory will fill the different space that He has positioned us to be in, in our family, in our workplace, in our life group, in the space that we are, we, we are living in right now. When I count to three, let's pray out loud, let's pray out strong, shall we? One, two, three, come, let's pray together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pray, pray, pray. Come on, people, pray. Pray, leaders, come on, pray, pray, pray. We are spiritual leaders. We cry out for the presence of the Lord. Lord, feel, feel us, oh Lord. Let your glory fill this place. Do your work in me, through me, oh God. Allah, in my family, in my workplace, in the zone that I'm living in, in the life group. 
Lord, fill me, oh God. Let your presence be felt, oh God. Let the move of the Spirit be felt, be tangibly felt in the name of Jesus. Let new people come to know Jesus. Let those who are already in the in the faith, Lord, they will grow in Jesus' name. They will grow in Jesus' name. We we'll all live lives that are holy, set apart for you. We will love you. We will give ourselves to you. We will walk with you. We will make disciples and we will help those people who are far from God to come to know you. Father, let your glory fall on our church, O oh Lord. Let your glory fall in the different spaces, O oh God. Let the tangible presence of God be felt, O oh Lord. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, let your presence touch every leader in our church. Lord, it begins with every single leader, every single life group leader, O oh Lord. Inhabit us, O oh God. Lord, we ask you to come and to fill us touch us minister to us in jesus name help us to be familiar with the presence of god help us to grow in the ways of the lord help us to to be so longing to dwell in your presence all the days of our life help us to listen to the spirit to obey the spirit to speak the things of the holy spirit help us to walk closely with the spirit every single day of our life lord just feel us oh god oh hallelujah keep praying Oh Lord, just do your work, oh God. Just do your work, oh God. Spirit of God. Spirit of God, we welcome you, oh Lord. Spirit of God, we welcome you. And we ask that you come and you feel each and every one of us, oh God. Help us, oh God, to be familiar with the things of the Spirit, oh God. Help us to live in the presence of the Spirit all the days of our life, oh God. We will be so supernatural, naturally, oh God. Holy Spirit, we give you full reign. Lord, change our thinking. Change our speech. Change the way we serve. Change the way we do things around us. Not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit, says the Lord. Lord, we long for you, Lord. So Holy Spirit, come. Have your way in us, O oh God. Change the texture of our church, O oh God. Let it be a church that is filled with the Holy Spirit. Let it be a church where we will be familiar with the things of the Spirit. That we will minister to one another in the power and the knowledge and the grace and the goodness of the Holy Spirit. Minister to us, O oh God. Change us, O oh God. Let, let every life group Lord, one of the captions that we use so well is hope is better together. But truth be told, every time we talk about hope is better together, we're talking about hope is better together doing natural things over makan, over holiday, over fun things, Lord. It's good as that is and we need that. Father, I pray that our hope will also be better together spiritually, oh God. That we will revolve around the things of the Spirit. We will, we will pray and we will believe for healing, oh God. We will teach and we believe that lives will be transformed, O oh God. We believe now that you will minister in the power of the Holy Spirit towards one another. Lord, that we will be dwell together, we will be formed together because of what the Spirit is doing in each and every one of our lives. Amen. Amen. Let's do it together right now. Which, can I invite you to just go into groups of two or three if you are with your spouse. That's a fantastic time you can pray with your spouse. If, if not, you can just gather in groups of two or three around us. Let's, let's pray together, shall we? Let's pray together. Let's pray together. Let's pray that God will, will move through each and every one of us. Can we do that right now? Uh, if, if you have a visitor around you, just this will be a good time you can pray blessing over him or over her right now. Come, let's, let's pray together, shall we? Come on, let's, let's pray together. Let's gather in groups of two and three. Let's pray. Let's pray. Hallelujah. We have, we have to be familiar with the things of the Spirit. We have to be that. We, we have to go that route. Hallelujah. We cannot just function naturally. Oh, come on. Get someone around you. I just pray. Pray, pray for them. Pray for each other as a couple, Lord, that your glory will fill our marriage. Fill whatever space that you have put us together. Oh Lord, do your work in us. That as a couple, Lord, as, as a life group, as friends together in church, Lord, we will move together in the power of the Spirit. Oh, Oh, 
Oh, Oh, as you as you draw near to the Spirit, we are drawn near towards one another. So we'll be better friends. We'll be better life group members. We'll be better spouses. Yes, oh, hallelujah! We should do that right now. We should do that right now. Oh, hallelujah! It's not weird. It's not weird to be in the presence of God. It's not weird to be to to experience spiritual things. Oh, hallelujah. It's natural. It's natural. We are spiritual beings having temporary physical experience, not the other way around. Our spirit will live forever. Our spirit will live forever. Let's be familiar with the things of the spirit. Hallelujah. What is unseen is eternal. What is seen is temporal. What is seen is temporal, as powerful as they may be. Whatever food that we eat, whatever holiday that we go to, as powerful as they are, they are temporal. But the things of the Spirit, they will last forever. Forever and ever and ever more. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Lord, we pray, we pray, we pray, we pray, we pray. Husbands, those of you husbands, lead your family spiritually. Don't just bring home the bacon. Oh, hallelujah. Invite the Spirit of God to be in your marriage, to be in your family. Oh, spiritual family. We're not just here to just, just do things. Just, just, just run the show, just... Bring the kids to school, bring a meal, pay the bills, buy the next house, the next car. That's not what we are called to do. We are spiritual leader. Wherever we are, spiritual leader in our family, in our life group, in the church, in our workplace, we are spiritual leader. We sense the things of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. 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 As every eye is closed, every head is bowed. There may be some of us here, the truth about us is that we do not yet know Jesus. Jesus loves you. The most important decision you can ever make in your life is to know Jesus personally. So if you are here today, you say, Pastor, I do not know this Jesus, but I want to know Jesus. I want to have all my sins wiped away. I want to have a right standing before God. I want to accept the death of Jesus, the salvation that Jesus has brought to the whole world, I want to invite this salvation into my own heart. So as every eye is closed, every head is bowed, if this is you, in a moment's time, I want to lead you to pray. This prayer is a prayer where we invite Jesus into our life for the very first time. If you are already a believer, I'd like to invite you to pray together with us as well. Would you pray together with me? Say, Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, I confess that I'm a sinner. I confess that I'm a sinner. And I want to thank you. And I want to thank you for dying on the cross. For dying on the cross. For my sins. For my sins. Right now. Right now. I invite you. I invite you to come into my life. To come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Lord. Be my savior. Be my savior. Help me to become. Help me to become the kind of person. The kind of person I was created to be. I was created to be. I pray all this. I pray all this in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen.